this was a moment in a universe where nothing was constant but the speed of light. On an orb called Earth, known to be flattened at the poles and perhaps in its philosophies. On an irregular skin of rock called North America, in Michigan and East Lansing, this was a place to bring a camera into focus and record the doings of a year. Michigan State University. Registration. September 1959. The budget for the year was 30 million. You could have bought three Atlas Able missiles, a third of an airplane carrier, or a week's total war in, say, 1861. The student population was 20,000. They might have outnumbered the Greeks at Thermopylae. They could have stemmed the Saracen tide in Spain saved Rome from the Huns, kicked the extra point at Waterloo, or with Lee, made Lincoln's Gettysburg. But their objectives today were purely educational. Their identity, for the moment, seemed to be a matter of alphabetical order. And IBM machines. They came from 50 different states. They came from 90 foreign countries. Together they spoke 70 different languages. And the key word in each was confusion. Registration had the appearance of a bazaar, where courses in a hundred fields were open to purchase and barter. But this annual seeming chaos was actually a time of serious selection and commitment to a program of studies that would take brains... ...blonde, brunette, and bald. They were endo, ecto, and mesomorph. They were Christian, Jew, Muslim, Shinto, and undecided. The colors of their skins were an iris of humanity. This was a beginning like any other year. The freshmen had arrived a week before. When they came, they brought teenage ambitions. They brought ideals and the need for ideas. They brought the spice of their backgrounds and recipes for success. They brought fear, hope, ambition, invention, and dad's old stubborn bicycle. They brought the truth of themselves. And they brought a hunger for the truths of the world. They came on the fulfilled dreams of parents, on the money of fathers, on the scholarships of alumni. By loan, by saving, by contest, they brought the coin of the realm to exchange for the means of education. And while they paid their dollars, and enlightened people who knew that facts without purpose are sterile. Training without understanding is weak. Degrees without wisdom are inadequate. And any man educated at the expense of the people is a gift of the people to themselves. The smallest was four feet 11, the tallest six feet nine. The weight range was 94 to 276. 
and all of them were a well from which humanity would draw the conclusions, decisions, and actions of the next 30 years. In many ways, the academic year 1959-1960 was like any other year, obeying old and often superseded laws. Bodies in motion tended to stay in motion until acted upon by some outside force. Bodies at rest tended to stay at rest. Energy in every case continued to equal the mass times the speed of light squared. There was unity and balance. There was point and counterpoint. Things moved to the dactyl and to the anapest. There was basting and brocade, beginning and end, fall, winter, spring, summer. And bodies at rest were often hatching quiet miracles. It was a year of new facilities like the new education building, the new Kresge Art Center, and the new women's intramural building. Training of old. There was more room as in the new library, but there was more need. There were perhaps more teachers, but there was more to be taught. And there were more students to teach it to. Like any educational institution of distinction, Michigan State was easy to pin down. It had to do with the geography of the intellect and the spirit. It had to do with the topography of minds and characters. It had to do with the prevailing direction of educational and social philosophy which undergirded the whole dynamic program of the university. The climate was not subject to exact description, but it could be said to promote growth in searching minds, maturation in character. It could be said to conduce to the eventuation of educated human beings with a fix on significant goals. a regard and a reaching for culture, and an honest advance into the deep ignorance that precedes wisdom and social responsibility. In 1959-1960, Michigan State did much that was new, but much that was traditional and perennial. The academic year was punctuated by a familiar spectacle. But there was also a rhythm of quiet, ongoing research, teaching, and living, as Michigan State sought the delicate balance vital to its successful function, serving the educational ambitions of the largest number without hurting its service to the aspirations and capabilities of the insatiable gifted. Preparing men and women for the qualifications of extant jobs without precluding the development of new qualifications for new jobs it diurnally dealt with the half-truths of today's society, while it felt for the fundamental truths of any day's society and tomorrow's technology. It balanced the need to fit with the need to misfit, recognizing that change and growth are more vital to social health than a simple subservience to a status quo. And it held itself remarkably alive and um, remarkably sensitive to the changing needs and the changing knowledge world. It could no more hold still for its portrait than a healthy child drawn to the wonder and mystery of gulls in flight.
much of what Michigan State was in 1959-1960 was what any land-grant university was. Much of what it did would be of interest only locally, within the state and for the alumni. But under the pattern of raw growth, the deliberate and often desperate accommodation to growing numbers of education-avid students, personality and the distinction were continuing to evolve which made it, yes, a land-grant college, a people's college, a Big Ten university, a state university, but withal an educational institution unique, bold, different, and crucial. It came in part from an omnipresent man, President John Hanna. A university leader and an educator It came in part from a faculty, young statistically, but leavened with provocative age and tradition. It came from students, young, not leavened at all, upstart, eager, ambitious, bright, plodding, beautiful, and needing brains to get by. It came from an alumni whose deep pride, gratitude, and sometimes sentimental affection mustered into support of the university and its programs in dozens of ways. came from inside and outside. Many distinguished visitors spoke at the university. And there were cultural offerings as vital as classrooms. Like redwood trees, Michigan State was young at age 104. And yet, it went back beyond the moral act through five millennia of thought. with Russell, Galileo and Einstein, Shaw and Aristophanes, Ovid and Sandberg. But who can deny that it had its non sequiturs and anomalies? The ducks on red cedar, the birds who came to dinner and never left. Beaumont Tower, a heap of ordinary if lovable stones whose quarter hour tones had etched themselves deeply into the fabric of campus life. M.A.C., Michigan, almost a profanity of the days when Michigan State was anxious to attest its status as a full-fledged university, but now a fond and allowable part of the university's history. Beale Botanical Gardens, in winter a slumbering collection of rare plants, herbs, and shrubs. It most remarkable in summer, perhaps, for its unassailably complete collection of good old Michigan weeds and yours. The Red Cedar, not really wide enough for a river, too wide for a creek, unconcernedly splitting the campus into north and south. A place for ducks, canoes, bridges, pageants, and small boys not needing a fishing license. Michigan State, in the best sense of the word, was conservative. It worked to conserve from loss, waste, and injury the knowledge, traditions, ideas, and intellectual strength of the past. Instead of midnight oil, it generated 59 million kilowatt hours of electricity. And the lucubrations of its faculty and students exhausted some 30,000 electric light bulbs. At the same time, the red cedar was in its cups. And it was something to call home about. In the best sense of the word, Michigan State was liberal, characterized by Catholicity and freedom to think, investigate, 
explore, synthesize, and create. And it was generous in its furnishings for the research for truth and the creative transmission of knowledge. In the best sense of the word, Michigan State was radical, dealing with roots and the heart of things, things and ideas, ideals, basic, prime, and significant in its effects on people and on concepts. It cataloged 11 books short of 50,000, circulated 500,000, listed its holdings at 700,311 published items, and yet acknowledged that one of its of a still better library. In sports, Michigan State's overall record topped the Big Ten. Through the Michigan State Development Fund, the alumni added a new electronic computer and a new high-speed centrifuge. Among many other advances, the museum opened the new Central American Rainforest exhibit, replete with bug bites on the that the art department crawled out of a paint-splattered temporary shed to the magnificence and challenge of a Kresge gallery and studios. The kiva of the new education realized not only the Hopi Indian influence on architecture, but a bold new program in teacher preparation. Continuing education continued to educate. Beyond the campus, classes were held in dozens of Michigan cities. Knowledge was transmitted in the classroom and via TV. A new videotape complex was put into operation, and it greatly facilitated program storage. Okinawa, Nigeria, Pakistan, Vietnam, Brazil, and Colombia benefited from the efforts of the Michigan State Overseas Programs. During the year, the Board of Trustees dealt with many vital matters, but none more popularly dramatized than the to be or not to be of the reserve officer's training program. New on the board were Mr. Warren Huff and Mr. Frank Merriman. Three, four on the campus for better or for worse. There was a tendency in 1959 to take a close look at the Russians, who had beaten us in putting a satellite into orbit, who had named a brand of cigarettes after a dog called Laika, and had sent the defenders of American public education scurrying to their battle stations. A team of Russian educators had sat in the education lounge and acknowledged faults in their system and faults in ours. The Moscow Symphony played to a full house in the auditorium. And in Michigan State's fine language laboratory, Realistic students said, Yanye Gavaryu Poruski. A few weeks before the start of the year, the Pan American swimming tryouts were held in Michigan State's new outdoor pool. One hundred and fifty new records were established. The soccer team continued of increased audience. 
but other teams without uniforms and generally without spectators conducted other campaigns. Quiet touchdowns were scored in physics and nutrition. Problems weightier than a Pennsylvania fullback were tackled in psychology and international relations. In the physical sciences and social sciences, agriculture, engineering, in the humanities and vet medicine, patient researchers eked out yardage. And in the Rookie Honors College, the sticks were brought in. First three years, it had managed the necessary first down, and it had. Although it was a year that paid tribute to distinguished retirees, ending their long and effective service to the university, Michigan State as a whole had a spirit of beginning. You could see it in the footers of new buildings. You could see it in the faces of high school students. High competitive scholarship exams. You could see it in the faces of graduates. Commencement. This was it. Michigan State in the academic year 1959-1960 a year that ended in many ways where it began. Yet for 20,000 students a year to remember, whatever it was that was distinctive and unique, you had not quite found. You had not quite uncovered. You had not quite caught with your camera. And you would not find it this year or perhaps any year. Because almost before the year was documented and tallied, it had blended into next year. September 1960, freshman, registration again, dramatizing the unending dynamic forward progress of time and Michigan State University.